In this podcast episode, I'm going to tell you about a fantastic video I saw on YouTube from a British writer and author, Richard Reeves. It's called The Friendship Recession, and not only is it a genuinely interesting video to watch, it also gives fantastic insight into the benefit of friendships on our mental and physical health. This is another really strong argument why there's never been a better time for you to take up Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. I've just found out I'm colorblind. I'll be honest, that news came straight out of purple. Hi there, my name is James, and thank you so much for checking out my channel, BJJ Family Podcast. Today's episode is a little bit different in that it's more of a supporting argument as to why BJJ is the perfect activity for parents, especially dads, and I think especially dads like myself who often struggle with their mental health. Like me or someone that struggles with their mental health Yes, I know it's a pain in the ass But you are not alone As you'll see from this podcast Richard Reeves has written many books. Probably his most famous is called Of Boys and Men, Why the Modern Man is Struggling, Why It Matters, and What to Do About It. And from listening to this video, the source material and statistics he got about friendship were taken from the American Perspective Survey done in May 2021. Apparently having no close friendships is as bad to your health as smoking 15 cigarettes a day. I have absolutely no idea how you would measure that or quantify that, but that doesn't sound like a good thing. When it comes to friendship, I always think it's important to remember that not all friendships are created equally. So for example, I've got a few thousand friends on Facebook that I've never met. who probably only added me as a friend in the agenda that I might support their Facebook group down to like Jiu Jitsu. So at one end, you've got your Facebook friend you've never met all the way through to People who you were friends with, maybe more out of circumstance than choice. Maybe moving on to people who you grew up with, maybe you're members of your family or people you went to school with, all the way to the other extreme, to your one best friend, that person who you could call anytime, day or night, regardless of how horrendous a situation you found yourself to be in. In this video, Richard goes on to say there are four types of friendships. Number one, friendships of people who it's more circumstance. You work in the same place. You probably work in the same office. Number two, friends that you've made through a shared activity. Number three, friends who you've known in your past. So people you grew up with. And number four, online friends. Anyone who's a parent will probably testify that life is pretty busy. And what little spare time you do have, you often feel too tired to organize social events and catch up with your friends. That said, it's a bit of a vicious circle because when you're a parent, you've never probably needed more opportunities to let off steam, talk to friendly, like-minded people who may be in the same position as you. And ironically, you have less time to do that. If you have a limited amount of time in your week to take some exercise, to work on your mental health, to hang out with positive, like-minded people who more often than not become your close friends, then BJJ is perfect because it ticks all those boxes. According to this American Perspective Survey, they say the optimum level of close friends people have is three to four. I'm guessing any more than that than they cease to become close friends. And apparently having 10 or 12 acquaintances slash friends is considered the optimum situation. Apparently friendships are considered so important because it's something that we develop out of our choice. There's no agenda. There's no transactional reason to be friends. Friendships are so important because there's nothing in it for you other than the relationship itself. Richard goes on to say one of the reasons he feels that people struggle to make friends these days is lots of institutions have declined. Institutions like marriage or more people working from home or loan working, which ironically puts much more of a pressure on your need to have friendships. What are the things that can stop you from making friends? Geographic mobility. Quite often people moving away or working in different parts of the world. It's harder to maintain a friendship when maybe one of the main reasons where you were friends is that you lived in the same town. This next reason I'm guessing may resonate with anyone who follows my podcast and that's parenting. When you become a parent, you physically haven't got the time or the energy to do anything other than parent. Apparently an increase in the term workism has done nothing to help people keep their friends. This is the idea that basically your job 
becomes your purpose, your role, your raison d'etre in life. And then social fractures, like the breakdown of a marriage, can often mean not only are you losing that relationship, that you're losing access from friendships and friends that you had because of that marriage. Richard goes on to say there aren't actually really any benefits to not having any friends, apart from obviously the feelings of isolation and what that can do to your mental and physical health. Lots of people meet their partners through friendships. Lots of people get job opportunities through friendships. Lots of the life advice, financial advice, parenting advice comes from your friends. According to the survey, a lack of friendship doesn't just isolate you economically or physically, but it can also actually just make you sad. According to this survey, as of 2021, 15% of men say they didn't have a close friend. Apparently that statistic was 3% in the 1990s. In 1990, when asked, 45% of men said that if they had to turn to someone, someone they really needed some help or advice with, that person would be their close friend. Apparently now that statistic is 22% as opposed to 45%. When pushed on this topic, apparently 36% of men now say that if they had a major problem and they needed to talk to someone, they'd turn to their parents instead of a close friend. A lot of people's obvious response when, why do you think you don't have many friends? Blame the pandemic. And the pandemic has definitely been probably the biggest test of the strength of our friendships, certainly in my lifetime. But apparently, according to this American Perspective survey, the pandemic negatively affected women's relationships more than it negatively affected men's. This is put down to that typically female friendships tend to be more face-to-face more physical contact than men. Men's friendships apparently are often based around an activity or technology. This would add weight to the idea that the pandemic had more negative effects on women's friendships than men's friendships. And actually, when I think about my friendships, my wife's friendships, that's accurate. My wife's a teacher and has lots of good friends that she works with, but she's also still part of a close group of about 10 to 12 women that she meets up face to face at least a couple of times a month. Whereas as of today, my friendships tend to be the guys that I train Brazilian Jiu Jitsu with. And therefore, if I stopped training Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, I probably wouldn't have any friends apart from my one 2 a.m. phone call best friend. So if you're listening to this podcast and it's resonating with you, that you like me feel like, actually, I want more friendships in my life. I can see the benefit to my mental and physical health. What can I do to improve that? The first step to dealing with a problem is to admit that you have a problem. Is admitting to yourself that you need a friend, which to a middle-aged man can often feel like quite an embarrassing thing to admit. The idea that you don't have any friends doesn't feel good. But in the same way that when I get my new diary and I write down all my medium and long-term goals, Maybe I need to factor in prioritizing friendships. Write down on a list, make it a priority to organize some sort of social activities in my week. Have the strength of character and the vulnerability to admit this is something that you're lacking, that you've let slip, and that next year you're going to prioritize and make a concerted effort to get back in contact with your friends. This is another really strong argument why there's never been a better time for you to take up Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. I really hope you got something from this podcast. And although the friendship I'm offering you is very much virtual, the one thing I generally do like to do to support the people who are supporting me is if you'd like me to sing your very out of tune song on your birthday. If you watch this podcast, well, I thank you, please. If you're making me a sandwich, I'll have pickle and cheese. That would be my pleasure. All you need to do to book that in for the next year is visit my website, www.dandmindmatters.com. Contact me there. Let me know your name and when your birthday is so I can send you a link to the Dad Mind Matters Facebook group and I can sing you a horrendously out of tune ukulele song on your birthday. I hope wherever you are in the world, you're okay. Take care. BJJ is a game changer. I'm really not capping. I've been training for eight years, spent a lot of that tapping. The one thing I know to be true is BJJ is good for you. If you struggle with your mental health, please follow this directive. BJJ will improve your life. 
cause it'll improve your perspective. <laughs>